Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Interpower, the premier supplier of power system components for worldwide markets, we're bending cell phones, electrifying motorcycles, and cutting electric vehicle charge time in half. Researchers at Queen's University in Canada have developed a new smartphone that can morph its shape to give users a silent yet visual cue of an incoming phone call, text message, or email. It goes concave for a call, waves the bottom for an email, flips a corner at you for a text message, and even bends up and down to dictate urgency. The Morph phone is made of a thin, flexible, electrophoretic display manufactured by Plastic Logic, a British plastic electronics company. There is a series of shape memory alloy wires beneath the flexible display that provide the contracting talents of this device, much like the telekinesis talents that I've been striving to perfect. The Morphone comes from the same researchers that came up with a bendable smartphone prototype known as the Paperphone back in 2011, which is best described as a flexible iPhone. It does everything a smartphone does, like store books, play music, or make phone calls. But its display consists of a 9.5 centimeter thin film flexible e-ink display. Some may think that bendable, flexible cell phones are the future, but I jump when my current phone vibrates now. This thing will get broken in no time when I throw it across the room after it starts squirming in my pocket. A new fast charging system from Volvo and Siemens is cutting recharge times in electric vehicles. The new 22 kilowatt fast charger system is an onboard charger that operates on a three-phase supply and uses a three-phase outlet to provide enough charge for a range of 102 miles and 90 minutes. Siemens' new electric motor develops a peak power output of 120 horsepower and 84 pounds per foot of torque to the vehicle's wheels. Using a 400 volt, 1032 amp outlet is where the quick turnaround comes into play, but only if a standard socket is available. In other words, infrastructure issues play a huge part in the vehicle's real world ability to throw down these recharge figures. So let's get to it! I'm tired of these gas prices. Bramo is a company known for designing powerful electric vehicles. After running the Isle of Man TT race with its first electric motorcycle, the company was looking for a more powerful option to compete in the 2012 TT XGP E Grand Prix. They wanted to create the world's fastest production electric motorcycle, so they partnered with Parker's Electromechanical Automation Division to create the Global Vehicle Motor, or GVM, for use in Bramo's Inertia and Impulse motorcycles. The relationship worked, both are current TTXGP world champions. This year, the team is hoping for a bit more power out of the deal. The bike was able to achieve 75 to 80 horsepower in 2012, but according to Steve Atlas, the 2012 champion, the newest bike is up to 155 horsepower with three times the torque, all in about 14 months time. Bramo found success in the new design by having the engineering team directly involved in the development of race technology. The new design is power dense in a small space. The flexibility inherent with the variable stack lengths and winding configurations even allows the company to design hardware to fit the magnetics so it can be used in a larger product base. Atlas will be joined by former champion Eric Bostrom as both will compete on Impulse RR bikes in the 2013 FIM E-Road Racing Series. Good luck boys, though I'm not sure that you're gonna need it. French students are working on a prototype screw-propelled snowboard, Propulse Surf, to help knuckle draggers over flat ground and up hills. The design is based on Archimedes screw, known for moving water from low to high ground, tracing back to the 3rd century BC. Two screws located at the tail end of the board are powered by small electronic bicycle motors, creating forward momentum. The Propulse Surf isn't intended to be a fast adrenaline spiking activity on its own, but to assist snowboarders in backcountry free riding. If it only could help those poor adrenaline junkies land. Cause landing on your face is not a good idea. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PDND TV, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire.